Hey everyone, the name is Chris Barocci. Welcome to Guitar Tweaks. This is the second and final episode of my short series where I build a DIY guitar. I'm making this as a part of this two-month challenge, this DIY challenge. Follow the hashtag if you want to find out everything about it. It's hashtag DIYKitChallenge22. You'll find a link in the description box uh, to get all the information you need in case you want to participate. And this is the last time we can appreciate this golden beauty because <laughs> I'm about to put on Pelham blue. That's gonna be the final color coat and uh, I will put on probably like four layers same as uh, with the gold uh, finish, the gold top gold. Alright, I'm done with Pelham Blue, but I don't want it to look this blue, because this is how brand new Pelham Blue looks like. What I want is a slightly greener version of it, like a more vintage uh, version, which is something you can uh, sort of recreate with using um, a, an almost transparent but slightly, well, amber colored um, spray coat. You might still remember that the color under Pelham Blue is gold. So that's what I want to see and I try to scratch it <laughs> back to a point where I scratch away the Pelham Blue and let the, the gold finish shine through. So after literally three days of scratching inside the cavities of these carvings, I'm done. <laughs> 
my finger hurts, but it was worth it because um, it looks better than I expected because obviously I had no experience with doing anything like this. This is so specific. I didn't know what will happen. If it will look terrible or usable or whatever, but it actually looks really good. So um, as mentioned earlier, before I started scratching the, uh, the carvings, I sanded the body back just a bit to make it flush. And now it's finally time for the final couple of layers of clear coat. This is a decal paper. It has like a backside which will slip off uh, once you put it in water. But before you do that, after you print it on it with your normal printer, you have to put um, an acrylic layer on it. This is just a clear um, acrylic color, right? So uh, you spray this on there and let it dry. And then you can cut it out, put it in water, let it slide off and put it on the headstock or wherever you want to put it. Okay, so let's do this big guard, uh, three ply black uh, blank pigguard and I uh, drew the original pigguard of this guitar on top of it and now it's time to cut it out. Uh, I'm using my jigsaw which is way too small. For this I'll need a better one uh, so I know what is gonna be my next proper tool investment. Here's a little tip if you need to age plastic parts. Uh, like for instance, my pots and the pig guard uh, are totally black and white and I want the white to be a little more, well, sort of browner. So um, I'll be using this uh, antique patina, which is like a wax stain, really. It's, um, it's sort of a protective um, wax, but it's also stained to look like old wood or like old furniture. Digging this, the uh, the block inlays with the uh, with the binding, and then the palm blue. I hope you can see it in the camera. <laughs> it's so cool. The first thing I'll do is use uh, these scrapers. These are little metal, uh, well, tools, uh, which are really simple. They just have a really sharp edge, and with that, you can peel off finishes really fast. And I love these tools. 
There are different shapes, of course, I'll see which works best. Then to make it nice and smooth, I will obviously use uh, sanding paper. Not sure about the grit yet, but I guess something about like one to 300-ish, um, that, that kind of uh, grit. And then I will have to take care of uh, the actual wood, uh, which is then, of course, unfinished. So first of all, I will stain it. I have some walnut stain, uh, which um, I will not apply twice or three times, just a little bit to give it a bit of a browner look instead of the very, very much white looking um, maple. And then uh, I will put on some oil. This is a fingerboard oil, but it's a natural oil. So it's, it's really, like wood really likes this kind of stuff. <laughs> and uh, I will also use some ash. I'll grab some ash from our oven <laughs> and just mix it with the oil and just rub it in. Because that way, um, that kind of sinks in with the oil and uh, keeps that sort of old, aged look um, on the back of the neck and to seal all that uh, the last step is going to be some wax this is nice to sort of stabilize everything and close those pores and uh, protect the wood from humidity all right uh, there's one more thing i definitely have to do and that is the uh the fret edges they're kind of okay not too sharp but i'm i'm really picky with that too <laughs> that's how it is uh, so I want to I wanna round them off. The pickups finally arrived. These are Mojo Tone P90s. And uh, I love these pickups. And by the way, the coolest packaging ever. It looks brand new. And that's an issue because I aged all the other parts on the guitar. I want to age these screws too and the uh, two screws that will uh, sort of mount it to the body. This is a big moment. This is gonna be the last sanding and polishing or buffing of the finished surfaces. Even though I really do not like sanding, <laughs> uh, the sanding process because it's, well, it's just too much. Half of what you're doing if you're refinishing a guitar is sanding back. It's, uh, yeah, but, Still, this is the only one that I actually enjoy because this is where I'll get to the final looks of the guitar. And I cannot wait to see it. Uh, I'm gonna be using the Micro Mesh pads again, uh, 1500 up to probably 12,000, maybe not exactly, maybe eight is gonna be enough, depending on how much gloss I wanna have. Even with 12,000, you only get like a VOS kind of gloss. Um, yeah, I'll see. I'll see what fits best this finish and what, I don't know, what I fancy.
I have a problem. <laughs> I just realized that my kind of measuring the posts for the bridge and for the tailpiece were not enough accurate. They, um, I just held it on top and uh, just sort of simulated pushing in the posts in the holes in the routings and uh, I thought like, oh yeah, cool, these, these will fit. Not really. The problem is that the holes, like the distance is like about one millimeter, maybe one and a half millimeters too narrow uh, for this bridge or well, for the uh, tailpiece, I should say. And the same thing for the bridge. I need to widen the holes, which is normally a big issue because then the post will just fall off, right? Fall out of the holes. The good part is that the uh, posts do not fit in there. So I have to widen these holes anyhow, which is good because I have this uh, routing Dremel bit here. I will widen these holes and try to increase the distance between the centers of these holes at the same time. Yes. Here's the wire. Maybe you can see it. And uh, I just push in the post and with that it's sort of clamped. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Starts to look like a guitar. Some of you might be wondering how come there are so few ground connections on the, in this circuit. Uh, well, that's because of this copper tape. Uh, normally you would have everything connected, like all the black uh, ground wires connected to the back side of the volume pot, and that would connect to the back side of the tone pot, to the switch, uh, to the switch and to the, uh, the jack. Now the thing is that I had to connect the jack sleeve because that's not automatically connected to the uh, this copper tape, but all the rest, like the switch, both uh, parts are. So I don't want to have a ground loop, that's why I'm not connecting them again. So this middle lug here, this one, which would normally be ground, doesn't need any connection because the switch and the parts are already connected with this tape. I'm not using this to shield anything. I'm not very keen on that. It normally works. I don't need shielding on my guitars. Uh, I don't know, I guess I'm lucky. <laughs> so that's not the purpose of this. This stripe is literally just to save me some ground wires and uh, yeah, save me some time actually and keep it clean. I'm, I'm really happy with how it looks right now. It's so clean and minimalistic. It's exactly the way I like it.
What's up with ground? Nice. Nice. I want to make sure that this nitro finish cracks. I, I really like this uh, weather checking look. And uh, in order to make that happen, I will use a cold shock spray, uh, which goes down to like minus 40, minus 50 Celsius. And um, that's supposed to <laughs> break these finishes, like crack these finishes. So uh, it kind of simulates a really, really, really cold winter night. <laughs> kind of unbelievable but I'm pretty much done with the guitar I still want to fine-tune little things but to be honest uh, wow this was this was intense it was like a month 
maybe one and a half not sure exactly when I started but it's uh... <sighs> I'm really happy with the guitar the way it turned out it first of all it looks great second of all uh, it sounds great let me show you that Here's a short rundown of all the parts I've been using. I'll put gear links in the description box below if you want to check out those parts um, in the Toman store. Um, you can do that. Uh, all the hardware is from Godo. These are non-locking, just normal six left, like six in a row kind of tuners. This is a bone nut from Godo. <laughs> These are Mojo Tone uh, pickups and electronics. These are low wound um, P90s, uh, switchcraft uh, switches and everything and uh, selected really low friction 500k CTS pots. <laughs> And uh, the bridge and the tailpiece is also from Goto. Um, yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's such a nice guitar. I ran it off the um, the fretboard edge, but I didn't have to do anything with the frets, which is nice. I just polished them to make them even nicer and slidier and whatever. But I didn't have to level them, luckily. So um, I'm pretty um, satisfied with the uh, the way the DIY kit uh, was, like out of the box. <laughs> Let me know what you think about this guitar and uh, help me please give it a name. We need a name for this guitar. I was thinking about Swampcaster because uh, this this 
design kind of looks a little bit like the uh, you know Wild West kind of uh, Mississippi Rose poker party kind of design not sure but yeah uh, let me know what you think about it and how you would name it you guys take it easy see you next week in a new video and meet you down there in the comment section I'll be back bye bye